Welcome to tutorial on Monterey Phoenix, a modeling for formal uh, systems web tool. Um, here on the web page, I've clicked on the Firebird web interface for the modeling tool. And I'm uh, also uh, just looking at this tutorials uh, PDF. There's a good tutorial that helps get started. All right, so let's take a look at that Firebird tool. I've got an example already loaded into the web interface here for you. Uh, the, the main concepts are the left hand side is the code. The middle pane here is the set of uh, graph display for the primary graph. And then on the right hand side, there's another pane where it shows the different permutations. So far, there's just one. The other main thing that you'll see in the graph is that there are green nodes in the graph. Those are the, the actors, and then the blue things, those are atomic events. So these are basically the driver can enter a car, start the car, move forward. And that's over here in the code uh, as green text, the driver enters the car uh, and then uh, does these sequence of actions. So it's just separated by spaces with keywords there that we've made up. The other thing to sort of recognize is that there's dashed lines here and there's solid lines. And if you drag this a little bit over, you can see that actually the the events uh, the are here, the atomic events, those are blue. Those are connected sequentially with solid lines and the dash lines basically indicate ownership. So the driver can do any of these things. That's the dash lines that you're seeing. And the solid lines are saying it's a sequential ordering of events. Same thing over here with the cars, we've got the dash and solid lines. So we're going to see that uh, through the rest of these graphs. I won't sort of call it all explicitly, but I just want to point out that there's ownership of the events and there is the sequencing of the events with solid lines. All right, so this is a pretty uh, easy entry point to get started with the model, but it doesn't really tell us that much because it's just pointing back to what we already put in in the code. So, so no new in insights there. We'll go to the next uh, iteration of this model, which is slightly more complicated. In this, uh, I've the driver is still the actor, and the act the event is that they enter the car, but then we want to introduce uh, the concept of alternative options here. So it's a split in the business logic, with the parentheses. It's sort of like a an exclusive or, and so I can either enter the car and start the car, or I can enter the car and exit the car. And then if I've started the car, then the other things that I want to do are as with before. So this branching logic means that when we go run the model here, we're going to actually get it. This is again the primary graph display, but now on the right hand side you see there's this graph and there's a different graph. And so this is the set of sequences that are also valid and consistent with the logic, as is this one. So that's sort of the, the difference between those. All right, so that's the, the sequencing and the ownership. Again, these are not interacting yet, so nothing too surprising, but at least now we have some different permutations of the graph which are all valid. In the next uh, iteration of the model, I've sort of now added a little bit more complexity. I've kept the, the branching logic here for this driver actor, but now I'm gonna say that these two events are related. I start the car as the driver, and that precedes that the car is starting. And similarly, as a driver, when I'm stopping the car, then that precedes the car shutting down. So I've now uh, bound the, the relation between these different events. But again, it's not too insightful. I mean, these are sort of things that you would expect to happen. Um, and I've done that over here in the code with this coordinate. Uh, I'm taking an event from this actor and I'm taking this event from this actor and I'm saying that they are related by this precedence operator. All right, so let's move on to the next uh, iteration of this model. Now I'm going to introduce uh, a new concept that this sequence of events, the, the move forward, turn left, turn right operations, that's not all the driver wants to do. Right? The driver might do none of those things or they might uh, do any number of them. So the, squirrel, the curly braces followed by a, a star gives me an unordered set of zero or more events. 
And also, I've nested that inside of this exclusive or sort of parentheses with a bar. So these are, I'm going to do any of these things. I'm going to do a zero or more of them. So that's the, the split there in the logic. And the consequence is that when we run this graph, so we click on the, the run the code, and then here we're going to see one of 16 graphs. So again, this graph happens, um, but then that's, this is a valid representation of the logical sequence. So right here, I've just started the car, it's running idle, and then I shut it down. So nothing too exciting there. But also, another thing that I could have done is I could have stopped the car, or sorry, started the car, which starts the car, and then I'm running, I'm running idle, it moves forward, and then I shut the car down, and it is shutting down. So there's different permutations, and there's 16 of those over here in the right. And we can sort of flip through those using these arrows here. These are all different permutations that are valid. Um, and then uh, to make this even more exciting, those are all the valid permutations. Notice that there were zero or more of these. So it's sort of like there's no upper bound on the number of loops that I could step through here. And so that's where this scope uh, uh, slider here, I'm, I was at one for my scope and I had 16 different permutations. If I run this at scope two, that's just gonna increase the number of iterations that it goes through. So it's quickly, now you can see there's that same graph that we started out with, but now there's 169 because it's just exploring more of the permutations of the different graphs that are available and consistent with the same logic. So uh, these are, I'm not gonna scroll through all of these, but these are basically give an example of the different complexities of the consistent logic with this specification. All right, now hopefully you've been itching to sort of point out the fact that when the car moves forward, that's the same as the driver moving forward, and we want some way of coupling that. So in our last sort of improvement to the model, I'm gonna take the, the code that we had and add in a new command, which basically says the actors driver and car share the events of move forward, turn left, and turn right. You can sort of see in the interface here that when I click on this turn left, it highlights all the other instances. So it's kind of convenient editing process there. So now if I, again, set the scope to one, I run this graph with this constraint that the uh, events are common to those two actors, now there's just four. So that should uh, sort of trigger back that uh, in the previous sort of iteration of the graph, there were 16 permutations of this, and now there's four, because we've added in a new constraint. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but just to say uh, that there's more permutations there, and we can kind of rationalize through those stories and see, are they consistent? And again, because these permutations of this set of operations are unbounded, maybe we wanna increase the scope to two, and see how many different stories there are, and we can check those. And again, instead of uh, hundreds, now there's just 19. So we can sort of scroll through these and see, are these stories things that we would expect to happen from uh, a reasonable narrative of what's going on between these two act, uh, events and, and actors? So they can get pretty complicated, but the point of this is the specification of the different activities by the different actors is pretty straightforward and you'd want to be able to justify to yourself that these different uh, sequences of events are, are reasonable behaviors that you want in your system.